Hey, it's Aaron from GameWithDudes.com, and this time I'm checking out Curiosity. I'm going to emphasize this is the demo version. Some of the artwork and some of the other jargon in the game, things like that, might be tweaked a bit by the time the game comes out. But Curiosity is a cooperative deck building game from Andrew X. Hunter, and Curiosity is being published by Pleiades Games. Uh, playable from one to four players, uh, ages 12 and up, and takes about 30 to 60 minutes. Just like some other titles from play these games like Sea Shanties or Earth Rising, Curiosity has been designed to be environmentally friendly, meaning there's no plastic involved. Everything is, is biodegradable. That's important to Andrew, and important to play these, and important to you, the viewer. I don't know why I did that. Okay, so in terms of the backdrop, the backdrop involves an older aging cat named Percival who has been reading up a bunch of books, which have his face looking quite dour and looking quite sad, even though he's holding, I can only guess is his favorite ball of yarn. Anyway, Percival is reading up about an impending cataclysm because if you're named Percival, who better to tell a bunch of people about an impending cataclysm? So the game involves heroes, uh, hired, cajoled, what have you, helpful, however they do it, helping Percival to defeat guardians and hopefully avert uh, the impending cataclysm or maybe just survive it. I'm not really sure. I mean, I, I guess that depends on their success, what they define as success. I'm rambling. So curiosity, as I said before, this is a demo version. So some of the, the terms I'm going to say and some of the artwork and things are uh, likely going to change and that's okay. So I'm going to open the box, show you what the components are and show you how the game plays. In the game, you will be picking from a set of up to 13 classes. In this particular uh, demo of the game, you kind of have the starter classes, like you have you have a mage, magic user, and abilities to nullify all effects from one guardian for one turn. You have Lionheart, sort of the the warrior, you know, the uh, the character who is more about melee attacks. And I'll go into what all the different colors and attributes mean in just a second. Uh, you have the ranger, obviously uh, somebody that has a lot of has ranged stacks. Makes sense. Uh, the beginning of an encounter swap initiative. Your initiative card with uh, the the one initiative card. Initiative is who goes first, essentially. Um, kind of a standard deck building kind of kind of thing. You can be the powers. Clouder may gain. Uh, plus three loot cards after defeating a guardian when you receive two. So that's kind of cool. And in addition to those, there's going to be some, there are other scenarios that the designer included, which includes some, some full narratives and things you can follow, uh, some slightly, uh, different, the capacity, the capacitor. So, uh, some different heroes and some different enemies. So this one is the shocking fate. It's going to take five fear cards. I'll go into what those are in just a second. So, so you have somewhat of like, I think it's referred to as the arcade mode where you just want to come in and like do like a one and done kind of thing. You can follow more of a campaign with, uh, some other scenarios that you can, you can unlock as you, as you make progress of the story there. So in terms of the icons here, so uh, the blue is for pounce, the green is for range, purple is for magic, heart is heart. Uh, claw is melee and yellow is shield. And on top of those, you're also going to have 
some other abilities and special some other special abilities you can purchase as you as you work your way up and you can see there's ones with one two and i can show you three so so there's quite a bit of of deck building to do and things are kind of kind of pricey you'll be earning gems as the as the game goes on so for earning to earn more of the tier one costs two gems the second tier will cost four and the third is very expensive and would cost wow seven gems so it, it gets it gets pricey but you have to make choices you can't obviously upgrade everything so you have to figure out uh what's most important to you and the character on well, in the deck you're building out essentially and as far as the the abilities over here these are going to cost trophies and let me I should probably show you what those are that would make sense so the green you'd put on your ability uh meaning i guess it's unused and then you make, maybe you take it off to show that it has been used for all the different characters and trophies are what you earn after you defeat a guardian and you can purchase abilities with trophies and i might have stacked them well some are worth one two and three each different one has three types if you were to purchase the tier one pouncing ability and then you purchase the second one, the second one will replace the ability of the first one. And sort of like that. So as Percival has convinced various heroes here to make their way through the catacombs and, and take on guardians, before you actually get to a guardian, because these are guardian cards, I showed you some ones that are in the special scenarios here, but these are guardian cards. So what's gonna happen is the number of the guardian is how many fear cards that you're going to draw. So this particular guardian, the potent snack would draw. Wow, that, that can be interpreted in many ways. <laughs> is going to draw two fear cards and you're going to play both of these first. And once you defeat both of these fears, then you will get you work your way up to the guardian and how the fears work are you're going to have to between all of the heroes match all the icons in order to defeat each fear. When you defeat a fear, you are able to take a gem card and gems actually purchase these upgrades here, whereas trophies earned by defeating the guardians can earn these for the most part. You're going to, you would add a gem card to your discard pile. And then it would, you know, get shuffled back in and can be kind of put to the side. So after you defeated the guardian, you would have an opportunity to level up and, uh, and sort of customize your deck. And there is a way you can get rid of cards. It's called litter. You can litter a card. I mean, you, you, you dump it so you can clean things out of your deck because the, the other issue is as you take damage from the guardians, you will take on catnip. And you would think, oh, catnip is great. Catnip is cool in reality, I guess, in some doses. But what catnip does is it makes you catatonic. I, I, I warned you about the puns, because I think I did. So, well, well if, you, if I didn't warn you before, you didn't warn. There's a lot of cat puns. So, if you were to draw four cards, which is the size of your hand, and three of them were catnip, and or four of them were catnip, you're catatonic, meaning thematically you can't do anything. Like, it's a waste of a turn. And wants that so so your health is essentially uh your deck so if all 10 of the catnip cards enter your deck you lose so you're trying to make sure you can defeat uh the fears and guardians before your whole deck is kind of kind of ruined you don't want that one important thing to note is when you start the game, you want to make sure that you get the fear cards that do not have the same symbols more than once, only because based on the combination of characters you pick, because if you play solo, you're basically picking two characters and you're playing with two. You have to be careful because if you don't, you might not have two green between two particular characters based on what you pick. If you pick the Lionheart, and the mage, as you can see, you're st they each get that number of each particular card to start off with. You only have one pounce between the two of you. The mage has it, Lionheart does not. So you have to be careful to make sure that you only use the fear cards that do not have doubles 
So these would be for uh, some of the other scenarios and other things and not necessarily like just like the the one off mode where you're just playing just just a quick co-op or a quick solo game and not really uh, tracking your progress through and your progress can actually be tracked on some some pads so the clouder pads and yeah, this might be embarrassing I don't know I did not realize that a clouder was the name of a group of cats I guess I've been saying a bunch of cats my whole life and I've been not using the term clouder but now that I know you know so I'm just gonna run you through a couple of turns show you how the game works I'm going to choose two heroes. I'm going to pick uh, the ranger and the mage, and I'll put the others to the side. So I'm gonna pick the ranger and the mage, and there they are. Looking all rangy and all magey. I don't know why I said that. That was terrible. So. I'm gonna put two cubes on here to signify that, hey, they have not used their abilities yet. They are still, they're still available. And thank God for that. So, you're gonna put 10 catnip cards into a deck. Just kind of put it to the side here. Also, you're gonna take 10, 10 gems that you will earn Okay. The game will also come with some player guides. Those always help. So in a two player, sorry, in a solo game, you will just basically be controlling two different uh, characters. And that means you will also take two of the two loot cards, two gem loot cards, and So in a solo game, you'll be controlling two different characters, which also means for every character you take a two loot card, two gem loot cards, and shuffle them into the loot deck. Kind of hoping to, you know, to get those out so you can, you can spend them once the guard is defeated. After every fear you defeat, you take a loot card, whoever is the one to defeat it, the character defeat, defeat the, uh, the fear, you would add a loot card to their discard pile. Ideally it would get shuffled back in and can be used after the fact and the damage you take from the guardian is to fortunately add a, uh, add a catnip and you think it would be fun, but not for these cats. This catnip makes you catatonic. I'm not sure how that really works, but we're going to go with it. Oh, should also uh, be picking a a guardian and other cars are right set up will help. Uh, so let's say I oh, okay. I'm gonna pick the unsurprising skeleton. Okay, uh, this guardian swaps their initiative with the lowest player. That player may perform one action before the start of their first turn. Oh, that. It's kind of nice, actually. All right, so we shuffle up the initiative and that is going to dictate the turn order. So initiative gets revealed. And, well, I'm not, well, that's the thing. I'm not at the Guardian just yet. I have to defeat the fears first. So that's not gonna happen yet. So it's gonna go three, Five, six, so boom, boom, boom. Okay, so the first sphere is right there. And of course, I have already forgotten something that is kind of crucial. I'm not sure why I did that. Forgot to draw and make my deck. It's hard to play a deck builder without a deck. All right, so the ranger is going to get a melee four range. Uh, no magic at all. Fortunately, uh, one shield, one heart, and three pounce. One, two, three. So this is the Rangers deck here. I shuffle all these together. 
I'll give myself a little bit more space and that is my deck. All right, the mage. The mage is going to get no melee at all, not a surprise. Three range, that's nice. Gotta have range, gotta have range. Four for magic, makes sense, they're a mage. Gotta have magic, right? You got one shield, one pounce, one heart. And I'm gonna shuffle these up, and that is their deck. Okay, so initiative gets started. So the mage is gonna go first, the guardian is gonna go second, and then the ranger is going to go third. Should probably have multiple guardians over here too, but I'm showing an example. I wanna be successful, so don't judge me. So I'm gonna draw four cards out. It's my starting hand for the mage. Uh, let's see what we got here, okay. So these are the four cards the mage drew. So the mage is gonna use the heart as an assist. So I think in a two player game, I guess it would work the same way for a solo. I think you need to get two out of three in order to defeat a fear if memory serves. So that is, that is their turn. So over here to the Guardian. So this Guardian swaps their initiative with the lowest player. So I guess they're gonna go first. A player may perform one action before their first turn starts. I already took my first turn, so I'm not sure how that works. But this two means that I'm going to discard two cards out of the loot deck. You unfortunately can't really see it. So I kind of Turn it a little bit. There we go. So I'm gonna discard two cards out of loot deck, which just means that that's, that's two less things in a loot deck, which is which is not good. Because if you have nothing in a loot deck, that means you're gonna have a lot, have a lot of catnip coming in there and that makes it difficult. Uh, this three means, the three gem means I would earn three loot cards after uh, after I defeat the guardian, so. And I can see what they are, so they're just the single ones. Not great, but at least it's not the double ones, because those are a double, that's really useful. All right, so now we're over here to, well, I guess it's gonna go like that. So I guess it's back over to, to me, this character again, because they have initiative of five. And of course, none of this is useful. Great. All right, so then over to the Ranger. I'm just gonna draw four cards and hope that they get something halfway decent. Hey, look at that. So they got that. So these two defeat two of those. So these are going to get discarded. Well, I guess I could just put them down here, couldn't I? to go over here actually. I'll move this and put that there. So those get discarded and this sphere is done. So the sphere is it's been defeated. One out of the three. And because the fear is defeated I get a loot card for my discard pile. So I got a gem that's will hopefully soon be circulating through through my deck and can be spent eventually. So uh, back here, the Guardian is going to remove two more cards from the loot deck. That stinks. Here comes another fear. Um, let's see what we have. So I'm going to play the, the purple magic here to nullify that. And that's their turn. And oh, look at that. And we have a heart. So, wow, the ranger is just getting everything. So, all right, so that goes over to the discard pile. And look at that. And we get a, another fear has been defeated. Um, if you, I believe, once you 
go through the entire oh look at that it's a it's a two gem right there Oof. once uh because of the guardian you go through the entire loot deck you add catnip to it so that's and you won't know so that's how catnip begins to enter into your deck and you don't want to get it out because this is taking up space you can't do anything with it and the you know the customization of that deck comes in when you're spending the gems on the cards that are up here and then the special abilities that are over here. All right, so the Rangers had a really good turn again. Uh, so I guess another fear is gonna come out, but two more cards from oh, the loot deck are going to go into the discard. It'll get reshuffled, it'll just get reshuffled with a catnip in it. And there we go. So. Now down to the mage. See so if the mage can do anything correctly. And ah, look at that. So two out of that, two out of three. Boom, boom. So the mage defeats that third fear, which also means they're going to get the loot card into their discard pile. Yay. Oh, the ranger ability is at the beginning of your encounter. Swap your initiative with the one card. Well, if the one card isn't out, then you can't swap. So it's, it's very specific. And yeah, so that's those three fears are done, which means now we can attack the guardian directly. But now it is going to be the ranger's turn because the mage just went. Oh, got to see what it is. And I can put out two cards at a time for assist. I'm gonna put out a pounce and a ranged attack. So that's gonna take care of uh, two of those cards on the on the guardian. Now it's the guardian's turn again, so they're gonna do two more damage. Uh, another two two gem two to the loot deck. Ugh. All right. I'm gonna draw two more cards for the mage. And let's see what they have here. Oh, seriously? Okay, so they they have some magic to contribute. Still missing the shield and still missing the melee. But we'll get there. All right, back over to the ranger. Let's draw two more cards. Let's see what they got here. Okay, so. Like I said, you can play up to two at a time on a turn in your assist area. So now we have the melee accounted for, but then back over to, uh oh, so that's a lot of damage. So now a catnip has to go in back into the loot deck and it'll be reshuffled. And this is how catnip potentially can enter into your deck. And like I said, the game ends once if you, are going through and you manage to empty out the catnip deck. It's 10 for a two player game. And I think it just goes up like that. So I think it's, oh, for a three player game, it's 20 catnip. And then for a four player, it's 25. And then the gems stack similarly, where it's 10 gems for two players, 15 gems for three players, and 20 gems for four players. It's gonna get reshuffled and it's refreshed, but it's refreshed with a cat. And that is the guardian's turn. So back over to the mage. So they come up with something and aha. All right. So they got the shield. They have all five accounted for the unsurprising skeleton. Make the sound effect. I don't know. Is is defeated. Uh, which means uh, three gems can be added to the discard pile. I'm not sure what the distribution needs to be for that, but I just gave them two, gave them one. There you go. So that's how the game works. I mean, that's that's a very condensed, uh, you know, that's a very condensed version of it. But that is some that's how a game will work. But oftentimes you're going to have multiple guardians doing a lot more damage to your your loot deck. So you're really incentivized to defeat the fears as quickly as possible 
because every turn the guardian is going to be uh you know taking more cards out and then if you have to reshuffle it then you you have to uh add a catnip who wants to do that so at this point i will be able to take the gems out and make some purchases if i wanted to from the cards that i showed you earlier they're kind of expensive, but that's that's how the game works. You got to earn them. You know, you, you got to earn that stuff so you could replace some of the single ones with maybe some of the doubles. And that would better prepare you for some of the cards that you'll see coming down as the game continues on. that are going to have double icons and things on them. So, yeah. So that is a, 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 just a simple uh, example of how curiosity plays. So when I first played, it reminded me of something like a um, one of the, the games that I kind of got the kids into when I first started getting into hobby, uh, into enthusiasts or hobby gaming was um, a five minute dungeon. We got five minute Marvel and I gave five minute dungeon away. Obviously, this game was a lot more going on than that was you're purchasing cards, you're actually building a deck as opposed to just shuffling everything you have and hoping you get what you need to to continue on. But I like that. I like. You know, I, I like cooperative games. I like working together with people to uh, to defeat enemies. But it's it it seems kind of always oh, easy. It, you know, it's simple. But when you have multiple guardians, you know, coming at these decks and you're adding a lot of catnip to it. You know, depending on how many players you have, this can get depleted pretty quickly. So you're gonna have to. So then you end up earning gems and you're defeating the fears and some of the guardians. But then you have to spend some of those gems just to clean your deck out. You know, so you can get rid of the cat that you've already taken on. So, and like I said, because there's so many things to buy, you can't purchase everything. You kind of have to just focus on what's most important. So, yeah. So that is a, a, sl a small little taste of curiosity. As I said before, there are some, there are going to be scenarios that have been generated by, by the designer. You can go through multiple players and uh, that, that's the campaign mode where you're, you're, you're taking on, you're going to be using, you know, the clouder pad to keep track of what you've earned. And this is the different level, the varying levels of, of what you have. So you can continue your game on and, and work your way through. And the arcade mode, just, you're just unlocking abilities and classes, uh, with, uh, just some generated scenarios. So the arcade mode is recommended for people just starting the game. But the campaign is something you can play, I guess, over over even more time. So anyway, that's curiosity, co-op game, enjoyable deck building. And if I might say so myself, a catalyst for fun. That's going to do it for me. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Stay safe. Vaccinated if you have an opportunity to and be blessed.